Guys, welcome. Happy Tuesday to everybody on this new episode of Real Boxing with Ronnie Shields. We're going to talk about June 1st. We're also going to see what Ronnie thinks about Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. So stay tuned, guys, and enjoy the program. Shields. Either get busy living or get busy dying. That's damn right. <laughs> Guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to War Week Boxing. Guys, if it's Tuesday night and 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, that means we're conversing with the living legend, the incomparable Coach Ronnie Shields. Ronnie, welcome to the show, sir. How thank art you, thou, sir? You. Great, man. Doing great. Ah, living the dream, living the dream. Something like that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God bless you, my friend. I tell you what, you have uh, that was some announcement yesterday, and we're going to talk all about that. And to help me discuss all of this and rattle off this week's edition of Fact or Fiction, I couldn't do it without my brother, J.R. Bell from the Boxing Source. J.R., welcome to the show, sir. All good. Just checking in here. Uh, now we're in. Well, chilling in the West Coast for now, uh, but, you know, ready to go with real boxing with Ronnie Shields. Oh, thank you, my friend. I couldn't do it without you, brother. And, and guys, I, I, I hope you appreciate and enjoy the new introduction, introductory song for Coach Ronnie, because last week's really didn't fit the coolest man in boxing, <laughs> and that's Coach Ronnie. So I hope you guys enjoy that. That's That was made actually by a friend of mine, Mike Atkins. Um great musician and he does a great elton john tribute so so that was done by him and so thank you big mike we appreciate it and guys um i do have to address something before we actually get started <sighs> i said something that was very insensitive on last night's program ah me saying something insensitive oh <laughs> yeah hard to believe right so i actually stated this Stated that, yeah, they're going to wheel out Michael Buffer to make the announcements for Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. And our brother, Orange Slice 72, um, he said, uh, oh, my gosh, is he in a wheelchair? Is he recovering from surgery or is he sickly? And so I have to correct this. My apologies for giving you guys that impression. Michael is a class act, and he's a great guy, but he's 79, and that's all I meant by that. So my apologies if I offended anybody, including Mr. Michael Buffer. Guys, before we get started, can I actually share a really cool Michael Buffer story with you guys? This is really funny. Um, the, do you remember that fight card uh, several years ago they had in Vermont or something? Um, a new promoter who is one and done. Boy, that's that's new to boxing, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it was one and done. And they called me from the airport, Robert Garcia, as well as my brother, Rick Morones Jr. Right. And they said, hey, hey, Joseph. Hey, man. Robert goes, hey, man, hey, do, the, do your Michael Buffer impression, man. It's really it's really badass, man. Do it. And I'm like, OK, so I start doing it. Are you ready for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world? Ladies and gentlemen, 
let's see, you know, and I start going and doing my thing and they just start cracking up beyond belief, right? <laughs> and then I hear this velvety voice come over the speaker and says, uh, that was pretty good, young man, but uh, you need to hold out the are you ready a little bit longer. <laughs> and I said, no, that's how Michael Buffer. He goes, no, this is Michael Buffer. <laughs> you need to hold out the are you ready a little bit longer. <laughs> and I was just quiet. And they are just cracking up, man. They're just <laughs> busting out laughing. And I said, um, Mr. Buffer, could you please tell Robert and Rick to take me off speaker for a second. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It was great. Great to meet you, sir. Uh, keep it up. You sound really good. And I'm like, well, oh, thank you, sir. Just, just completely humiliated. <laughs> I just embarrassed myself in front of a legend, <laughs> Michael Bubber. And Robert's like, gotcha, dude. <laughs> <laughs> True story, guys. True story. Oh, my gosh. And guys, before we leave, that just as an homage to Michael, I'm going to leave you guys with a classic story that I like to share with uh, our mutual hero, Emmanuel Stewart and Michael Buffer. So James, please remind, remind me of that. But guys, Ronnie, is there anything that you'd like to tell us? Anything special that you'd like to bring up at this time? No, not really. Other, no. other than Philip is going to beat that ass on June 1st. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he's confident that's what he's going to do. And I'm no. confident he's going to do it also. So. And there it is. There it is. James, anything that you'd like <laughs> to ask Maestro Ronnie Shields before we get started with FNF? Uh, well, uh, just, you know, wanted to see, you know, what was going on with uh, one of us fighters, uh, particularly uh, there with the uh, super middleweight, Osvari David uh -oh. Morell Jr. Woo! Yeah. Osvari! Um, well, I, I did mention like uh, him being a super middleweight, but it yeah. uh, looks like something's going on where he could be fighting at 175 pounds against Radovojje Kalazic, the hot rod. Uh, so anything in reference to that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, they've been working on that fight for, for a couple of weeks now, and I'm told it's going to happen. So. Uh, I just found out today, actually, that that they think it's going to happen. So look, look, but we don't, we're not confirmed on the date. But you know, a, a possible date is uh, June twenty second in Houston on the Javante Davis Frank Martin card. Oh my word! Is that setting up David Benavides versus Dave Morrell Jr. Coach Ronnie? Strong possibility. Wow. Do you smell that, James? <laughs> Do you smell? <laughs> That's an article right there, baby. You Woo! smell what the rock is cooking? And there it is. <laughs> and there it is. And there it is. So, guys, that, that's a perfect segue into our first Factor Fiction. Floyd, hey, wait. hey, we, we ain't ducking and dodging nobody. It's, it's time for Factor Fiction. Number one, please, Jr. Uh, it, it, listen, everybody, it's time for Factor Fiction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's how right. Floyd sounds when he's when he's hanging out in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, woo! You can see him like running down. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> like oh boy, yeah, stay away from down, uh, La La Land, Floyd. Stay away. No Diddy. No Diddy, Floyd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I ain't going to go into it. Yet. But let's go uh. with number one. Here we go with number one. When Bill Haney says, this ain't no game, I'm sending my son to kill him. What he really means is, I've instructed my son to adopt a safety first mindset and try to keep the fight from mid to long range as humanly possible. Fact or fiction? <laughs> oh, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't buy this false bravado at the Empire State Building, sir? Oh, absolutely not. Not at all. <laughs> Did we no, just... Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ronnie. 
No, I mean, you know, you got to sell the fight, you know. Uh, and that's the best way you can do it, is saying that his son is going to kill somebody, but, you know, he's not that kind of puncher to do that. So, but, you know, it, it's, look, man, they have to do what they have to do to get people in these seats and to get people to tune in on, on the pay-per-view. You know, because as of right now, from what I'm hearing, they're still not doing as well as they would like it to do. Yeah. So, you know, so you got to sell it any way you can. And, you know, with them pushing each other and all that stuff, you know, you know, that, that, that'll get a, two or three buyers out of it. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> says, oh, oh, boy. boy. <laughs> Oh, poor Ryan. Poor, poor Devin. Uh, so look, Ronnie, did we possibly see the most aggression that we're going to see this week from Devin Haney? Oh, without a doubt. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> Devin, oh, Devin is not the kind of guy that's going to run out there and jump on you and try to knock you out. That just not, that's not in his, in his repertoire. He don't have that. You know, so, that's, that's not him. So we know that um, we can't really afford the Ronnie Shields keys to victory on this program, but <laughs> very, very, um, the vanilla ice cream strategy keys to victory for Ryan. What the hell does he have to do to win this besides bring a, a baseball bat to the ring? Well, you know, he has to control the middle of the ring. That's what he has to do. He, you know, you know, Ryan has the big left hook and a good right hand also. So he has to. You know, they have to take that away from him. And he, he he does that by just being himself, being busy, and, you know, make Ryan play catch-up. You know, Devin can't afford to get behind in this fight from the very beginning. Otherwise, it could be a long night for him. So he has to come out. He has to set the tone, set the pace, and make Ryan fight from behind. And if you do that, he can, you know, he. I don't think he can knock Ryan out. But he, you know, he's definitely can, he can outpoint Ryan. And, you know, then he could talk all the shit he wants to afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ronnie, let, hey, in the immortal words of the boxing voice, let me ask you something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if Ryan is able to successfully take away that beautiful Devin Haney jab effectively, do does Ryan Garcia have Terrence Crawford to thank for that? Because he oh. put a, he pretty much put forth the perfect fight plan and example on how to take away your opponent's jab and win the jab contest. Yeah, but you know you got to understand Ryan is not Terrence Crawford. Oh, you, know, he's you can Terrence say that Crawford. again. So <laughs> you know, does he have that ability? I don't know. That's something we hope we have to wait and see if he can do that. If he can, if he knows how to take the jab away, if he can do that, you know, and, you know, that's going to be something that that's going to be very interesting. How does he do it? Does he, you know, do it, do it the Crawford way or do, it, do he has another strategy to, to take it away? Because like, there's plenty of ways you can take the jab away. So, you know, we just have to see, you know, what, what the game plan is and, but he has to, whatever he does, he has to do it from the very beginning. Because Ryan, to me, in my opinion, Ryan can't afford to be behind in this fight. I think he, you know, he has to take the lead and he had to make Devin fight from behind. And then that way, I think Devin would have to open up to something that he's not used to doing. Because, you know, Devin is a front runner. Yep. You know, and... You know, and that's a that's a good thing because you know you don't ever want to be behind in fights. But if you have to fight from behind, Devin don't have the power like Ryan. You know, Ryan can change the fight at any moment with a with a good solid punch. But I don't think Devin can do that. So Devin has to be the front runner in this fight. But if Ryan can take that away and become the front runner, you know, it's gonna be a very interesting fight. Wow, that is just an amazing analysis and great keys to victory for both fighters. Ronnie, your check's in the mail, brother. <laughs> Woo! 
That's another article. Wow, we're batting a thousand today. Holy cow. James, any questions on this topic before we move forward, sir? Okay, then. <laughs> You're on mute, sir. Um, let's see. Number. Oh, my fault. My fault. Uh, yeah, my so, fault. were you saying something, sir? Oh no, nah, um, I was I was looking at the other uh the next one there, there but uh, I think it's gonna be an easy night for Devin. So uh, yeah, I don't see uh something where uh Ryan could really have a shot to get in this fight. Hmm. So I've got one more follow up question. Now that you've asked, <laughs> yeah. Um, is this gonna hurt Devin's level of attraction and market value with all of this false bravado? If he goes out there with a safety first mentality and just picks and pokes his way to an easy UD and doesn't really show any, well, doesn't really push for the knockout in the eyes of the fans. Oh, you know, look, here's what I think. I think Devin just has to be Devin, man. He he can't be someone else to try to please, you know, he got to please the way he fights, you know, he the way he trains, you know, this is why it's called training camp. You know, mm -hmm. you have to have a plan. And, you know, as a plan, you know, you can't go over and say, I got knockout power when you don't have it. You, know, <laughs> you, you can't put that in a plan because you can't do something that you don't have. So, you know, can he knock him out? Possibly he could. But, you know, he had to stick to what he does best. And, you know, you can't ever worry about the fans, man. I mean, you know, the fans go out to love what you do. This is why they pay to watch you, to see what you do and how you do it the best that you can do it. And, you know, Ryan, Ryan has to be Ryan and Devin has to be Devin. You know, you, you can't make somebody strong. You have to naturally possess that. Mm, I tell you what, um, guys, his name is Ronnie Shields. And yes, he's an elite level trainer. He's here all week. We're just getting started, guys. Woo! Um, do me a favor, Big James. Could you forward this up to number six for our dear friend, Sly Tendencies, who just dropped oh, yeah. the super chat on Coach Ronnie? Woo! Yep. He says this. He says, Coach, I'm hearing a lot of folks saying that Beevil is too slick for Arthur Baturbiev. People <laughs> seem to forget that Baturbiev is a master at ring cutting. Tell him, Ron. So before you elaborate, sir, yeah. here comes number six on Fact or Fiction. Yeah, this is going to be moved up here. So here we go. Although many believe Dmitry Bivol will easily outpoint Arthur Bedebiev on June 1st, the heavy-handed Montreal resident will viciously KO the current WBA champ and become the undisputed king at 175 pounds. And David Benavides will still insist that he brings nothing to the table. Back to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, man, I think that's a fact. Let me tell oh. you something. Man. Mm. I'm a big fan of Better Beers, man. I am. Mm. I, I love this guy. I love the way he fights. You know, this guy, he don't turn his head for nothing. Mm. You know, he, he goes straight forward. <clears throat> and he can punch with both hands. You know, that's a rare thing you know, in this boxing game, that you can do it on both sides. Mm -hmm. And this guy has that, you know. Look, people think because because uh, Bivol, he beat Canelo, that now he's unbeatable. No, 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 no. You gotta look at this guy. <laughs> you gotta look at, <laughs> this is this is gonna be a hell of a fight. Look, and Bivol, yeah. trust me, he can fight. He can box, that's what he does best. But I don't think he's never been in the ring with a guy that can put the pressure and hit you on both sides, you know. And this is going to be a different ball game for him. This is not going to be Canelo Alvarez walking up to you and trying to hit you with one shot. This guy lets his hands go. So Victoria, he's coming to fight. And if you ain't ready for it, you're getting your ass knocked out. Simple Ooh. as that. 20 and 0 with 20 KOs. That's all I have to say. Ronnie, I think you're the soothsayer. Thank you for pulling out the crystal ball this evening. And Sly, thank you for always supporting Ronnie. And thank you for.
for the super chat. We really appreciate it, my friend. Guys, before we move forward, let's say hello to our dear friends in the chat. Adolfo Orta, you're welcome, sir. That came first and foremost with the two Davies. He said, salute Joseph James and Coach Ronnie. Rumors are circulating that the fight between the two Davies might be possible at the end of the year over in Saudi Arabia. Could this be fact or fiction? And obviously we heard that. Obviously nothing is set in stone, but that is a distinct possibility from the mouth of the living legend. So there you go. Thank you, Adolfo, for be always being here and supporting the coach, my friend. Um, also, my brother G Funky Boxing. Guys, please go support my brother G Funky Boxing. Subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, if you're in Northern California, go say hi to G Funky Live. He's going to be at the Gold Country Casino on April 26th, care of Uppercut Promotions. And I tell you what, congratulations, my friend, to all the success you're having with Uppercut Promotions. Couldn't happen to a better guy. And also, Sly Tendency says, Joe, your fight news are spot on. You guys called it before the tournament was announced. And that's because of the man right there to the right of me. <laughs> and that's it. Sly says, the card is insane. Yes, it is. And we're going to speak more about that, I'm sure, on Fact or Fiction. Mark, thank you for joining us once again and supporting the coach. Hello to you. And, yeah, from Florida, we appreciate you being here for the coach. Also, Team Batman Boxing. Thank you, brother, for supporting the coach. Now, here's some interesting news, guys. G-Funky reports, see, always reporting, what a pro. That plan push made the New York Mets say no to having Ryan and Devin throw out the first pitch today. Coach, your comments on that and being ambassadors for the sport of boxing. You know, sometimes when you sell a fight, sometimes you, you go too far with it. You know, not everyone, you know, likes the the pushing and shoving and hitting and fighting before the fight. Not everybody is a fan of that, you know. So, so the Mets, you know, they don't promote violence. That's Simple. it. You know, that's and it. They just made the statement, "Hey, you know, we're not having this. We're not going to support that." You know, these guys could be a gentleman, man. You're supposed to be, you know, you could talk all the trash you want to, but. When the press conference is over, shake hands, be men. Shake hands and just let it be that. You don't have to sell it anymore. You know, you don't sell it by with street stuff. That just don't sell in boxing anymore. You know, you it's okay to talk to trash. That's what people want to hear. But then when you take it too far, and then you know they lose they lost a great opportunity going, you know, for not going to the Mets game now. Yep. And throwing out the first pitch, that's a, that would have been a huge opportunity to probably gather more fans because not every fan is a boxing fan, you know? Mm -hmm. So they, you could turn baseball fans into boxing fans by just going and people seeing them and say, hey, you know what? We don't have nothing to do on Saturday night. Let's go see this fight. You know, mm. but now they're going to lose that. I tell you what, guys, and from one of the best ambassadors the sport has ever seen, Coach Ronnie, what he's always professed to his young fighters is that this sport is not about violence. It's no. about athleticism and sportsmanship. Ronnie's always professed that, and Ronnie is the sage. He knows. Ronnie knows. I'm going to have to start making shirts that says Ronnie knows. Ching Dao, <laughs> man. Seriously. Like, honestly, guys. It's such an honor to be able to feature the great Ronnie Shields and just, just get all of these nuggets of wisdom on a weekly basis. And, guys, we're all the beneficiaries. Thank you, Coach Ronnie. We really appreciate it. And Sly, he says, Devin can't bust a grape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he couldn't punch himself out of a paper bag like, Ronnie, or like a Harold Letterman. God rest his soul. And, guys, we want to thank Mike Big Boxing. For joining us and supporting the coach. Guys, please go support Mike Biggs Boxing. Thank you for being here, my friend. Um, Team Batman says, yeah, Ronnie, I agree. Amazing fight, but I do have the Turby of stopping Beevil as well. And there it is. Well, there it is. Oh, hold on. Mike Ladaris. Yes, it is. This is him in the flesh. Wow, is that Ronnie Shields for real? Yes, it is. Thank you for joining us, sir. And thank you for supporting the greatness. Um, and 
Terracotta, welcome back, sir, from Ireland. He says this is, in fact, a gentleman sport. This is what separates us from the UFC. Thank you very much. Once again, when we get our guys hurt, okay, and put them on the canvas, we go to a neutral corner and we give them a chance to recover. That's what sportsmen do. That's what sportsmen do, right? Is it any, it, it, like, what is the sport of it? If you're going to jump on top of a hurt guy and beat him to a pulp. Yeah. Anyway, doesn't make sense, doesn't make sense at all. We want to welcome Rasheen Brown to the show. Coach Ronnie, how was working with Stacy McKinley to train Mike Tyson? It was, it was, it was great, man. It really was. Stacy. Stacy is a funny dude. He keeps you laughing all the time. You know, <laughs> you know, he knows his boxing. You know, he's a good guy. And there it is. And I tell you what, who's do you have any idea who's training Iron Mike for his fight against Jake Paul at age 58? You know what? I don't know, to tell the truth. I mean, I see a guy doing the, the pass with him, but I don't know if he's the main guy or not. Could be, but I don't know. Well. I'll tell you what, we know that Jake Paul is working with the uh, gentleman from the Kronk. So he's preparing for the toughest fight imaginable. We know that to be true. But, um, geez, well, something tells me that's coming up very soon. Okay. But, um, yeah, Mike also says you've got to have the intensity to know a man down and then help him up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boxing, once again, in the words of Ronnie, it's not about violence. It's about athleticism and sportsmanship. I'll never forget that as long as I live. Uh, what are we on number two now, Big James? Yeah, we uh, yeah modified it so this will be the new well the new number three since uh, we moved number six or whatever. You're confusing yeah, me, my friend. Let's just stick <laughs> Let's with, just the go with the next one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not All right, as smart here we as go. you are, brother. <laughs> All right, here we go. The next one on, on Factor Fiction. Let's just do that. All right, the next one. Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson will prove <laughs> to be more competitive than Hergovich versus Dubois, but both fights will end in a devastating knockout. Factor Fiction. Oh, man. I don't know about this. This is that's a tough to call. You can be honest, Coach. I, I don't know if, <laughs> if Jake Paul has the power to knock out a guy like Mike Tyson. Mm. I don't, I don't, I don't know if he has that power, you know. And but flip it, Mike Tyson has the power to not do that. Either. So you know, so I'm gonna say fiction. Oh boy, I, I I tell you what, um, Ronnie, the only reason why I brought this up on Factor Fiction, I don't even want to think about this, but this is a distinct possibility. The professional in me had to bring yeah. this up and ask you this question. Um, when you get older, um, d how does that affect your ability to take punches? Well, you know, it, it depends on your body, to tell you the truth. It depends on how you treated your body coming up. And I'm not sure, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not sure he took care of his body the way he's supposed to. You know, like smoking and, you know, all that other stuff, you know. You know, that, that that goes hand in hand with, it. you know, but again, still, once a fighter, always a fighter. You don't lose that. You know, you don't lose that. You know what you have to do in order to get in that ring and survive, basically. So my Mike know how to survive. And he knows what he had to do early. You know, the, the thing is, when you're older, you're more apt to go out early and throw everything you got early and not Oof. worry about later. Mm. And a wow. guy like Mike Tyson who can punch, all he needs to do is land. Yeah. And he's got those creative combination punches on the inside, that yeah. double left hook, that uppercut. Yeah. Woo Boy, I tell you what, I hope Jake Paul did his homework for his sake. <laughs> Cause man, those those <laughs> let's let's be honest, those combinations on the inside are very difficult to anticipate, aren't they, Ronnie? Oh, absolutely. And see, and Mike Tyson's the kind of guy that you don't want to hold. You want him to work, 
you know, you want him to punch himself out. But the problem is, if you're getting hit with that stuff, then, you know, it's good night, sweet dreams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good night, Irene. I tell you what, we might be calling Irene or Jake Paul Irene to, on July 20th. I tell you what, and I, I maybe I'm weird, but I am actually getting excited about that event, Coach Ronnie. Is that strange? Not at all. Not at all. And anything my Tyson is a part of causes excitement. But going back to Mike, so you're telling me that him becoming a cannabis cultivator isn't helping him in the ring? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt it's not. <laughs> oh, Chingo, and thank you, Mr. Heymanite PBC, for being here and supporting the coach on this fine Tuesday. He says Mike Tyson is currently training with MMA coach Rafael Cordero. Thank you okay. so much for that tidbit of information. We appreciate you, brother. Um, AJ is a dosser. <laughs> That's one hell of a moniker. And uh, thank you, sir, for being here. He goes, I'm not trashing Jake Paul anymore. I'm not picking him to win, but he brings a lot of fans and a lot of money. Yes, he does. And this is why I stated earlier in the week that, call me crazy, but Jerron Ennis should have signed with MVP Promotions and Jake Paul instead of Eddie Hearn, who has yet to cultivate a superstar in the American market. Jake Paul has two on this July 20th card. Amanda Serrano is a bigger ticket sellers than 90% of the men in this business. Be still my heart and correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I'm not wrong, no. am I? <laughs> no, 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 you're not wrong. <laughs> the thing about it is, you know, sometimes, you know, Jake Paul is new to the boxing world. So, so sometimes guys feel that, hey, I, I'd rather go with a, a more experienced guy that knows more about this sport than someone who's just coming into it. Mm. That's not always true. You know, it's not always true. And, but I think Jay Paul has proven himself that he knows how to sell himself. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing about it is, can he sell someone else? And I think that's the problem that probably Uriah has had. You know, what can he, how can he sell me? Yeah. You know, how can he put me out there? You know, and sometimes when you don't have, you know, the right connections to get the right fights for guys, that kind of might probably hurt him a little bit, mm. you know, in the experience part of it. Those are very, very good points, Coach Ronnie. Very good points. But I tell you what, I really like this kid's enthusiasm and the shot in the arm and the fan base that he's bringing to our beloved boxing. You can't knock the hustle. Um, yep. Before we move forward, James, anything else for our uh, our favorite coach? Um, with reference to you know, that one, though, um, you know, as far as the event is concerned, as we see what's going on, they're building – uh, that to be a really big event in, in Dallas. So you're seeing what the, what else they'll have uh, in store for that card. And, you know, like you said there, Joe, um, maybe this is a missed opportunity for uh, Boots Ennis. But, I mean, he said his team uh, was looking to try to, you know, get fights uh, there. So I guess that's, you know, what they're doing. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what their plan is, particularly for his first fight under matching boxing. Yeah, yeah, but look, one of the what are the one of the rules of thumb that I tell to all my young fighters, guys, before you sign with anyone, don't worry about the signing bonus because the money will be there if your promoter is the right one. First and foremost, how many TV dates does he have and with what network? I'm sorry, Netflix trumps the zone at this time and by a very wide margin. You're comparing 400,000 subscribers in the US market alone to over 160 million subscribers in Netflix. 260 million worldwide. I'm sorry, but in my in my mind, that trumps everything. But we'll see how it plays out, guys. We'll yeah. see it. The truth always reveals itself in time. But congratulations to Veron Ennis 
for signing that absurdly inflated signing bonus. And there it is. Rasheen Brown, he says, hey, Ronnie, why didn't Lada ever go to 160 when he was with you? Was there ever talk about it? Um, you're wrong there, Rasheen. He did go to 160, and he flattened Tommy Hearn's son. Would you like to elaborate on that, sir? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, he did. And I was the only fight he fought at 160 would be. But, you know, he, uh, no, nah, I mean, you know, he was he was a 54-pounder. You know, and as, you know, as you get older, of course, you know, that, that gets harder to make. So, you know, but Lara is a, is a very disciplined fighter. You know, he's always in shape. He's always watching what he eats. And, you know, he, he don't go out and splurge like so many other fighters do, you know. And especially he's getting older now. You know, 160 is, is the correct weight for him right now. Mm -hmm. When I was training him, you no, know, 154, that was his weight. You know, he, he made it easily. And, you know, and as you get older, it becomes harder. So he moved up and, you know, and, you know, and congratulations to him because he became champion at 160. You know what? Can I share a quick story real quick, Ronnie? Because it really meant a lot right. to me at the time and it still means a lot to me today. And I will never forget this as long as I live. And uh, I'm a really emotional guy, so I'll try to keep it all together. But when my dad was sick and he was in a gurney right next to me, I came over to his house and watched the Showtime fight card with there's Landy Lara stretching Ronald Hearns with Andy Lee in his corner, as well as Javen Sugar Hill Stewart. Right. Emmanuel couldn't make it and it wouldn't have done him any good anyway. <laughs> right. And my dad was there and I said, Hey dad, you see that gentleman right there? Coach Ronnie Shields. He goes, yeah, he trained Evander Holyfield for a, for a good minute. Also <laughs> Pernell Whitaker, also David Tua. Yeah. Coach Ronnie's one of the best. I said, you want to see some interactive TV, dad? And so you were walking off and I said, keep watching him, dad. And I dialed your phone and you said, Joseph, did you like that? <laughs> <laughs> and I, didn't speak I, remember that. I said, coach, I have a very special person here who's a big fan of yours. His name is Gary Heron, my dad. Uh, can you say hi to him, sir? And you yeah. said, hey, Gary, what'd you think? And he goes, oh, my gosh, that was amazing. Is this really Ronnie Shields? And you said, yeah, yeah. And I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of losing it right now. But um, my dad never forgot that, and I'll never forget that oh, as long wow. as I live, Ronnie. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. Love you, Dad. So, uh, James, please take over for a good second. <laughs> All right, gotcha. No problem. Oh, we got the next one uh, coming up here for – uh, fact of fiction. All right. After this past Saturday night, Brad Goodman, the Hall of Fame matchmaker for Top Rank Incorporated, threw away Riyad Murray's phone number. Fact or fiction? Oh, that's fiction. <laughs> uh... You didn't want to fight, man. I mean, you can't make a guy fight. Uh... You, you can't make a guy fight. You know, it's just simple as that. You know, and this is why I say, man, these guys, they, they talk the talk, but not everybody can walk the walk. So, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, you, you, you get it for what it is. Well, I tell you what, Brad was plenty pissed this past Saturday night. Oh, Corpus. I know he was. I know he was. <laughs> oh, because, man. You know, like, Brad, just, Brad Goodman is trying you to know, see, you know. be the best matchmaker in boxing. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. Yes, uh, he is. And so well, he thought, was plenty pissed. I'm sorry, go, as you were, Ronnie. I thought you would have said he would have blocked Murad Murray's number, his representative's number, his manager's <laughs> number, his trainer's oh, number. Oh, no. He already did that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, because that's Brad's reputation on the line. And I really feel for Brad because the last several, with the exception of Valdez versus Williams, or Wilson, rather, excuse me, um, it seems like top rank is cursed on the biggest stages. Like you go back to Shakur versus um, Edwin De Los Santos in November. And then you go to Super Bowl weekend, Tiafimo Lopez and Jermaine Ortiz. Uh, once again, a snoozer. And then you look at this past Saturday night in Corpus. What is going on here, Ronnie? 
I don't know, man. You know, again, you know, it looked like a great matchup on paper, but you can't make these guys fight. You know, just simple as that, man. You know, uh, when you think you're putting on a great show, you know, sometimes the opponent doesn't show up. And that's the part that hurts when the opponent yeah. doesn't show up. Yeah, these guys want that bag, but they yeah. don't want to walk through fire to get it. And nope. that's, boy, it's not like when uh, when you were in boxing, was it, Ronnie? Absolutely. Oh, boy. And I tell you what, guys, that's what made us fans to begin with. The breathtaking action. These guys seemingly, seeming, they're seemingly superhuman. And we could not believe what they would put their bodies through just for a belt. And that's what made us fall in love with the sport. Fighters would be wise not to forget that today. But Rashid, thank you so much for the question, my friend. And I hope you enjoyed that. Um, oh, boy, that trip back in memory lane with me and my pops. Love you, Dad. So AJ Disaster said, yeah, I'm glad Mike is getting a nice payday and boxing gets a shot in the arm. That's the spirit. <laughs> that's the spirit. And Team Batman Box says, if it does actually take place, obviously really hope Tyson irons Jake out. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think we're all hoping like, uh, here's a big question. James, let me ask you this. Uh, let's now from you, you talk to fans all the time and you talk to all these guys at events. What do you think they're most hoping for to see Devin Haney get stretched or Jake Paul get stretched? <laughs> oh, by far Jake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My father's great. Oh, I love it. <laughs> but I, but I, think, I think I think we have to understand, though, the rules of the fight. We're not talking about the rules. The rules are you cannot be a winner unless somebody gets knocked out. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's just an exhibition. Right. That's right. It ends in a no contest then. Yeah. So, well, that's more incentive to get that KO. Come on, Iron Mike. Come on. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. Uh, Ham Rothstein. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us, sir. And 160 million people will see your commercials. You know, I wish they would see one for Warwick Boxing. That would help out greatly. <laughs> uh, Bruce, Gas Boxing, Jazz and More. Thank you for joining us, sir. And guys, if you haven't already, please go support Bruce. Thank you so much for always doing a great job and being the great ambassador you are. Rasheen Brown also says, is there any comp competition between boxing gyms like you and Derek James? That's a very good question. And a huge misnomer among fans. Would you like to answer that, sir? Sure. I mean, I have no competition with Derek James. I mean, me and Derek, we we always talk when we see each other. We get along well. So I have nothing against Derek. And as far as I know, he has nothing against me. So we have no competition, really. And there it is, guys. Guys, I'm here to tell you with Ronnie. There is no competition. Future Hall of Famer, guys. Future Hall of Famer. And there it is. And Mr. Heyman at PBC. Um, did you ever meet <laughs> Al Heyman? Would you like to answer that, Ronnie? Absolutely. Yes, I met Al Heyman. I used to hang with Al Heyman a lot when he first mm -hmm. got into the business. Yep. You know, because his very first Vernon fight, Forrest. I trained Vernon Forrest. Absolutely. Al came to all the fights. You know, he came to... You know, he was he was right there every time, you know, but, you know, but, but we still talk a lot on the phone. So what's amazing is Bernie Campbell is the is the gentleman responsible for Al Heyman snubbing and not doing being available for media. He got torched on a podcast that he was on on Max Boxing several yeah, like 15 years ago. Before he started PBC and when he was just working with with uh, Golden Boy Promotions and several other promoters. But Golden Boy was his promoter of choice at the time. Yes. And he used to come on all these podcasts and he was very well spoken, very, very sharp. And he was a joy to listen to. Yeah. And then Bruce. Um, no, 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 not Bruce. What was his name? Um, uh, Bernie. Bernie Campbell was his name, that jagalope. I tell you what, he came on just torching him. And he was like, don't you guys screen your calls? Like, what is going on here? Do you do you want? And he just hung up and terminated the call. And that was it. 
Right. And he had n- he never did a podcast after that, ever. And so thank you, Bernie. You ruined it for all of us. <laughs> and so there's your response, brother. Yes, Al Heyman is a very real guy, and he used to make all kinds of public appearances yeah. until Bernie Campbell, that jackalope. Yeah. And, you know, he used to go to all the Floyd fights also, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Sure Thanks a lot, Bernie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next one, Big James. All right, here we go. Boom squad. Oh, stop it, dude. Matthew's not in the building. Come on. That's terrible. Remind me to turn that down next time you do that, brother. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he, okay, he will get KTFO'd by the Big Bangs they sang on June 1st <sighs> and will still <laughs> insist that he's blessed after the fight. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. I don't you, know don't, you, you, you don't want to answer that. That's it. I don't. I really don't. Okay, you can push oh. then. We will pass. <laughs> hey, I, I know. Yeah, I have no problems with that. I'm... I'm still undecided, to be honest. Yeah, I'm still yeah, undecided. No. Because you know, I'm you know, just looking looking at both guys, right? You know, Zhang looked like he lost a step since he fought Philip. And you know, Wilder has definitely lost a step since his last fight. And you know, the crazy thing is Deontay only has the right hand. That's it, nothing else. Mm-hmm. You know. If you if you can say well he have a big left hook, then I can understand. But or a great stiff jab, I can understand. But he only has the right hand. That's it. Nothing more. Mm-hmm. And so that's all Zhang has to look out for is that big right hand. But with Zhang, you have to look out for everything. You know, and right now, you know, I think, you know the. The favorite is going to be Zhang in this fight. I think by most people would say Zhang is going to win by knockout. Okay. Well, Ronnie, let's not beat around the bush, sir. Do you think he's <laughs> adopted this new fight strategy that we've seen in his last two or his last appearance? Has he adopted that kind of strategy because his chin was annihilated? His customarily durable chin was torn to glass in his last two appearances against Tyson Fury. Oh, well, without a doubt. Without oh, a doubt. boy. Yep. So you there's know. your answer, guys. Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, boy. So what can he do? Just move around the ring, adopt that same strategy, and and, and hope that Jale Zhang tires himself out? Absolutely. Oh, boy. And, you, know, I, you know, I really can see a lot of bulls in this, in this fight. Hey, uh, hey. I can do, I can. the boo birds, the hey. boo birds will be in Saudi Arabia. That. I can see it. Yeah, yeah, I really can. Yeah, because if you know, just like he did in his last fight, you know, he moved around, running around, you know, trying to find himself. You know, he couldn't find no footing, couldn't find nothing. You know, I don't see him doing. I do see him doing the same thing with Zank, but Zank is going to push though. Zang mm. is not going to let him do that. Mm. Zang is going to go forward. And Zang will tell him, hit me, hit me, you know? Oof. And, you know, so, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a knockout in this fight. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid so. Well, I will say this, though, guys. So think about this and think about what Ronnie Shields has just educated you guys on before you start blaming a very smart boxing guy like Malik Scott. Okay? Very good. Just like you were wrong to blame Mark Breland, <laughs> you'll be wrong to blame Malik Scott. And there it is. <laughs> Before we move on to the next one, James, let's answer this from Nathan. Welcome to the show, sir. And thank you for supporting Ronnie. He says, is Ronnie still trading Jamal? Charlo was at yeah. his best when he was with Shields. Absolutely. We're still together. And there it is, guys. And there it is. Any update? Have you heard anything at all? Is there anything? Well, put it this way. Is there anything that you would like to announce at this time? No, nothing at all. We're still waiting. We're still waiting on uh, a date. And there it is, guys. There it is. So, Nathan, 
I hope that answers your question, brother. Ronnie and Jamal are still the very dangerous tandem at 60 and 68. And there it is. James, our next one, sir. All right, here we go. If Tyson Fury defeats Alexander Usyk on May 18th, he will not engage in an immediate rematch with the current unified champ, but will take on Anthony Joshua instead later on this year. Fact or fiction? Wow. Fiction. Oh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, what I'm hearing is that they signed a two-fight deal. Mm -hmm. And this is why after this fight, they're going to announce whether Philip Herkert and Daniel DeWaugh are fighting for the IBF. Because if they agree to fight a rematch, Fury and Usyk, then definitely he's going to do whoever wins are going to get stripped. And, and Philip and DeWaugh will fight for the IBF. Mm. And there it is, guys. Come on. Come on, rematch. Come on. Woo! And, then, and then the winner can fight Anthony Joshua. And there it is. And there it is, guys. <laughs> Take it to the bank. Take it to the bank. James, our next one. Something tells me that Ronnie's fighter is coming up next. Hmm. We got something here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, upcoming. Here we go. <laughs> Raymond Ford versus Nick Ball will prove to steal the show and be the most competitive action-filled scrap of the evening on June first. Fact or fiction? Wow. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know too much about either one of these guys, so I can't say it. But I, I believe these are the smaller guys, right? They. Like yep. 126. One, 126, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, these are the featherweights, yeah. You know, look, smaller guys, man, always steal the show. Yep. Because these guys, they throw punches, man. You know, it's not, you know, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. No, they go at it, you know. So there's a strong possibility that these guys can steal the show. You know, it's a strong possibility because, you know, I, I like the smaller guys, man. I do because they – they're the most entertaining guys. They don't have a whole lot of knockouts, but these guys get in and they throw punches. And that's what people want to say. Mm, and there it is. And there it is, in my opinion, guys. And look, Raymond Ford, I can't stand bringing him up, but congratulations to him for all the success he's been having because he beat the pants off of my guy, Ricky Medina Jr., at the Tech Ford <laughs> Arena. Even <laughs> after I advised Rick Morones not to make that fight. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Rick. Ching <laughs> out, man. That's what you get for not listening to me. Gee, wow. Tell you what, he'd still be undefeated otherwise. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Cuban historian, welcome to the show, sir. He says, How does Jamal beat someone like Caleb Plant? He's got a good jab. Um, <clears throat> he's got a great jab, sir. Did you develop that jab or had it or did he have it already when you started training him? Ronnie, let's yeah. state Captain Obvious. Let's welcome him in, into the conversation. Ronnie, answer that, please, sir. So let me tell you something. All fighters have what they have. You know, you, you can't you can't make a guy uh develop something that he don't already has. You know, what you do is you have to just make sure uh, he's stepping in properly. And, you know, and for Jamal, that's the first thing I did when I first, first started working with him. I noticed he had a really good job already. So I just worked on him stepping, stepping in with it. And Jamal actually has knocked so many guys down with his, with his jab. Mm -hmm. His jab is really strong. And, you know, and he works it up and down like nobody else. You know, so he's, you know, he's a natural man. He's just a natural fighter. And, you know, and for a trainer, all we have to do is develop what he already has. But, you know, but with fighters, man, fighters have to have that already. It's not something that you can teach a fighter to do. He has to have that naturally. And you just add to what he already have and let him go. And there it is. It also helps when you've got the natural athleticism of a gentleman like uh, Jamal Charlo. And you can add even more wrinkles to his arsenal. Um, Ronnie, quick question. 
What were your thoughts when you first saw him working out as an amateur, as a young kid at Willie Savannah's gym? Oh, man, you know, him and his brother, man. I, I used to watch them every day, you know. And every day, they, from the, they was 14 years old, begging me to train them. <laughs> you know? They did. They both, every day, man, they saw me at the gym. Hey, man, come train me. Come do the pads with me. Come, you know. And at the time, man, you know, I had so many pros in the gym at that time. And I really didn't have time. But, you know, occasionally I would jump in the ring with them and do pads with them. And then when they when uh, Jamel turned 17, you know, I started turning them pro. And Jamal didn't want to turn pro at that time. So Jamel had to jump start on Jamal. Jam Jamal wanted to, to go to the Olympic trials. He did, he lost. Then he came back uh, about six months later and he turned professional. Well, I tell you this, I'll, I'll say this. Um, and yeah, it was obvious that they were going to be very successful professionals with their athleticism, with their um, ring IQ, and then with the best coach in boxing. I'll say this, though. I thought it was absolutely absurd, Ronnie, when Golden Boy signed Jamel Charlo, but not Jamal at the same time. I was like, well, well wait a minute. What's going on? Why didn't they Why didn't they sign Jamal? Do you have that that? answer yeah i do actually you know he, here's the thing um jamel you know like i say he, he had to leap on, on on jamal so he was already like eight fights in before jamal turned pro mm. and i was lucky enough that they did put jamal on the shows that jamel fought on so he he got lucky to get on those shows because you know i couldn't find the right manager for him you know, and actually, you know, it was hard, man. I mm. called everybody. I called everybody that I knew. And they didn't think, you know, that because one brother had success, they mm. felt that the other brother, when he couldn't have the same success. You know, and I told him, I said, you're wrong on this one. Mm. And I, you know, I, I called it some of the top managers in the sport at the time. And I, I, t I called the top promoters in the sport at the time and everybody turned your wall down i mean wow. everybody i could not get him signed with nobody and then i just went to al him and said man could you just please put him on on the on, on the show and he said we, we can do that and we did and that's how i got him that's how i got him seen and the rest is history i remember james actually james gogi our mutual friend um finding opponents because no one wanted to step in ring with Jamal and it was really difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now we know why. But Lance yeah. Meyer, welcome to the show, sir. He says, I believe Zhang and Bateria both need to implement the same strategy and be prepared to hastily cut off the ring while applying pressure. Otherwise, the end of this show will be more than lackluster. I agree. I agree yep. with him. Yep, there it is. And Rashid. Is Dave Morrell really moving to 175? It's inevitable, sir. It's okay. inevitable, guys. Well, well, let, me, let me let me comment on that. Yes, sir. Now, he's fighting one fight at 175, then he's going back down to 168. That's yep. it. There it is. You heard it from the coach's mouth. Wow, that sounds like an article again. I love <laughs> it. Um, James, we're running uh, we're uh, running short on time, so let's move All on right. to the next one, sir. All right, here we go. Rancis Barthelemy will shock the world and the Fresno faithful by stopping Jose Ramirez in front of his hometown fans on April 27th. Back their fiction. If they let him take a hammer in the ring with him, we probably will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, they think it's a little too long in so, the tooth, Ronnie. Fiction, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't know this guy was still fighting. <laughs> well, look, the only reason why I even wrote that, and yes, the probability is not very high, but the only reason why I wrote that is because of all the trouble he seemed to give a real stud like Gary Antoine Russell um, when they fought because of the style matchup. And That's this it. matchup looks very, very similar on paper, but... We're, we're removed a couple of years from that. Absolutely. Yeah. And 
I know my lance is having fun in a long time. So yeah, I know. It's been a while. So normally, you know, you, you can't have ring rust going into an active fighter. Well, I will say this, though. The last time we saw him on Showtime, he pulled off the upset against my boy Omar from the Valley. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see if the old Wiley Cuban has something left in the tank. We'll see. The plot thickens. Next one, please, Big James. All right, here we go. Imanis Sanionis will seemingly dominate and outpoint former Olympian Gabriel <laughs> Maestre from Venezuela, but will lose his WBA regular world to weight title by way of unpopular split decision. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Oh, we hope. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I can't go against my boy. Your mom says, you know, I used to train this kid. Mm -hmm. And this kid, you know, I mean, you're talking about a kid that had bad luck. Yeah. You know, this kid, he hadn't fought probably almost two and a half, three years now. Yeah. You know, and it's a shame, you know, because first he got to fight, boom, then it blows up in his face. Then he got to fight, boom, it blows up in his face. I mean, this has been happening to this kid for way too long. I just hope that he you know he gets through this fight you know and you know just this kid he's one of the best fighters in the world and you're going to see that you're going to see what i'm talking about this Oof. kid can really fight and you know it's just unfortunate all the bad luck this kid has been having can't believe it well i tell you what let's just hope gilberto mendoza jr doesn't call his favorite judges to score this bout. <laughs> right. Or let's hope that that Amante Stagnone's jab just does a serious number on yeah. Gabriel Maestre so that they can't rob him of it. Yeah. I'm just worried about that Minnesota incident, Ronnie. I know. With, I with know. Michael Fox. Yep. Oh, boy. But I will say this. Hold, hold on. And I need to intervene right here because Ronnie, I promised Ronnie that he would never have to mention Effie Ajagba ever <laughs> on his show. And so I think you just answered your own question, though, Mr. <laughs> Hamanite. He didn't look the best against Guido this past Saturday. Yeah, that's because he's not training with Ronnie, sir. And there it is. So yeah. there you have it. I hope you appreciate that answer, my friend. But, yeah, I promised Ronnie that I would never ask him about Effie Ajagba ever on our show. So there it is. So let's let's uh let's move on. Let's see. Um uh, this should be the last one coming up. Is this the last one? Really? Really? Yeah. Yep. Okay, very good. And Lance, before we do it, Lance, I hear nothing but good things about Stanyones. Yes, yep. for good reason. Guy. Oh, he's got one of the best jabs in boxing, and you're gonna see it on the younger card of Canelo versus Mungia. I can't wait. May 4th can't come soon enough. As you were, James. All right, here we go. On May 11th, Vasil Lomachenko will seemingly turn back the clock and stop crowd favorite George Cambosis Jr. to capture the vacant IBF lightweight title. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I don't think he can turn the clock back. Really. Like, mm. like certain, you know, like you, you can only have so many fights in your life. He has. Yeah plenty and you know at some point you know it gets old your body your body gets old you yeah. think you have the power and you don't you know you know not that he may not win the fight he may win the fight but i, I don't see him knocking cambosos out i don't see that you know cambosos may surprise everybody in this one and and really come up and win a, a close fight in the, in, the, in the fight. Well, I tell you what. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see which version of both men because they've both been through a lot yeah. over the last several years. And Absolutely. look, say what you want about Haney's power at 40. And right. say what you want about Haney's power at 35. But let's just be honest, guys. If we're being completely honest and unbiased, Lomachenko took a lot of damage in that fight for 12 hard yeah, rounds. Yes, he did. 
And there it is. There it is. James, we're at the end of the road. Would you do you yep. have any other questions for the legendary fight trainer? Uh, nope. We are just able to get through fact or fiction. And so we are good to go. Oh, boy. Hold on. One more. Rasheed Brown. Thank you for hanging with us. I see a lot of fr uh, first time faces on the on the uh, on the chat. Thank you guys for supporting the coach on this day. Final question of the evening says, Ronnie, is it frustrating for you, both your fighters in Citron and Lada to get bad decisions against Paul Williams? Yeah, that was that was really frustrating. Mm. <laughs> it was, you know, and thought both guys won. But, you know, you can only do what you can do in this sport, you know. And we can cry, that don't change anything. We can bitch, don't change anything. Yeah. So you just got to hope you get the right, you know, to think about it is, you know, some sometimes I feel that these judges don't realize how hard these guys work, you know, and both, both guys, I'm talking on both sides. And, but if you win a fight, you're supposed to win the fight. Simple as that. You know, you're supposed to see what everybody else, you know, and the one guy is dominating. And then all of a sudden, the judge say he he didn't dominate. You know, then he he gives that guy the you know they give the guy the fight, and everybody everybody in the world knows who won the fight. You know, it's frustrating, man. It, you know, you say, man, all the hard work you did, and for somebody to just take it away from you, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough to come back in the gym and say I got to go through this again. You know, so that. It really, it's really frustrating, and it's really hard. Yeah, you know what? I, I do have to bring this up, though, Ronnie, and uh, it's only because we brought up Kermit Citron. What the hell happened with Citron and that? Wasn't that the Superman routine out of the ring? <laughs> and they carted him off with the stretcher when he wasn't even, he, they didn't need to do it because he was whooping that ass on Paul Williams. Yeah. Wasn't that that fight where he it almost like he looked like he dove out of the ring? It was weird. What yeah, happened that, that a, night, Ronnie? I don't know, man. That's that was a crazy situation. And he wanted to get back in the ring, and then all of a sudden they said, "Oh, lay down," and they put a neck brace on it, and they said, "Yeah, he can't continue." Like I'm like, what is going on here? That, yeah, that was, was the that one was... of the freakiest things I've ever seen in boxing. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was crazy. And you'd care not to elaborate on that, wouldn't you? No, not at all. Okay, very good. We'll, <laughs> we'll, accept, that. we'll accept that answer. Okay, judges have stated that that's an acceptable answer. Right on. <laughs> James. <laughs> Any parting shots for this evening, sir? Uh, when in Rome, so. When in Rome. Oh, <laughs> you know what, dude? I Thank you for bringing that up. So I'm going to bring up um, not the win in Rome story. I'll bring that up some other time. But thank you for reminding me, sir. I do have to, um, and this is a hero of both mine and Ronnie's, um, the legendary and unforgettable Emmanuel Stewart. And I, <laughs> when I was working for Emmanuel doing ring announcing and commentary and uh, doing publicist work for him, he goes, you know, it's funny. Um, Michael Buffer, most people don't realize that we found him. He used to do just little events for us here and there. And we're the ones who introduced him to HBO. And he became a legend shortly thereafter. And I feel stupid, you know. Um, I feel very foolish because initially I thought Michael was a little light in the loafers when I first <laughs> met him because he was so prim and proper and always dressed really well but we it goes we went to europe to uh for a klitschko event and oh my goodness women love this guy and i found out very quickly that he loves women just as much <laughs> this guy michael buffer he gets more ass than a toilet <laughs> <laughs> now obviously obviously i cut out all of the mfs right 
because right. that story was originally littered with MF every single sentence. <laughs> so I cleaned it up a little bit, guys, but yeah. Enough. <laughs> that was verbatim, though, guys, without the MF. Uh, though, yeah. That was Emmanuel. Emmanuel, it was amazing. He would be so articulate at times. And then he would throw you for a loop with some of the yeah. phrases that he threw out yes, there. He did. Oh, yes, he did. Unforgettable. Tell oh, you yeah. what, Ronnie, we miss him every day, don't we? Every day, man. Oh, jeez. A great guy. Mm, the greatest. I tell you Absolutely. what. That's gonna just about <laughs> do it. Narani, do you have any parting shots for our listening audience tonight, sir? As always, you can always follow me on Instagram at official Ronnie Shield. And there it is, guys, on behalf of the great J.R. Bell of the Boxing Source and on behalf of the living legend, Ronnie Shields, I'm your little old Joseph Heron. You've been listening to Real Boxing with Ronnie Shields on War Week Boxing. Have a great Tuesday night, everybody. Legend and elite level trainer, Ronnie Shields.